Despite thousands and thousands of players complaining about Rise of Kingdoms for probably at least a year now, many of us still haven't quit the game, myself included, and today we're going to talk about why. So this morning, I saw the Trick or Treat update mail hit the inbox, and guess what? I didn't even read it. I didn't even care. And that was odd for me, right? Because I make content about this game, and so I should be excited to know what's coming next. But I already knew that things in this update aren't really going to be that exciting for me, right? If it were some sort of commander or something like that, then sure, that might be exciting. But I figured if there were new commanders coming, I would already have known about it through a leak or a source or something like that. And so I didn't even read this for probably the first like 10 hours that it came out. And then eventually I was like, all right, I should probably at least know what's going on. But I just didn't care. And this has happened multiple times throughout my Rise of Kingdoms journey here there's some periods of time where I'm just less invested in the game. I'm just not that interested at this very moment. And that got me to thinking like, why do we all still play this game? If many of us continue to complain about it and there's plenty of other games similar to rise of kingdoms that we could be playing. Some of those games I've even featured here on this YouTube channel. We've seen age of apes. We've seen infinite galaxy. We've seen infinity kingdom. You could easily make the case that these games are strong competitors for rise of kingdoms for various reasons and that sort of puts me in a unique position because i've seen hundreds of comments from rise of kingdoms players who are exposed to rise of kingdoms competition and that sort of gives me an insight as to why a lot of you guys myself included aren't quitting this game one of the things that i think keeps a lot of players interested and engaged with rise of kingdoms is that the lore or the theme of rise of kingdoms is very massively appealing right it's got this very specific art style and a very specific time period it's not overly fantastical right there's not all sorts of superhero magical powers laser beams and all sorts of stuff like that but it's not hyper realistic like a modern day military styled game of this form of fashion which lilith also has entered that realm too it's sort of right in the middle it's based on history but it also leaves enough room for the imagination and i think that's why it's so massively appealing to so many people and that's not to say that other formulas or themes won't work for other games of this genre of course it totally will but i think for me specifically as a player that's one thing that i really like about it if for example you look at age of apes age of apes is more of a sort of futuristic style but it's a bit more cartoony because the actual apes themselves are the characters of the game and so i think maybe some people might perceive that to be slightly more child friendly right and of course there's machine guns and stuff like that in the game so it's not like fully childish but talking cartoon animals right is typically seen uh, in cartoons which are aimed at kids or if you look at something like infinite galaxy right that is a bit more realistic in its art style and it's in a far distant future sort of setting and of course if you'd like star wars then that game's for you okay so rise of kingdoms has a cool theme right but that's really not enough to get players addicted right it's not enough to keep players playing for years especially when you have competition within that specific theme i mean you look at infinity kingdom you look at things like lords mobile these are very similar in their theme and yet rise of kingdoms players aren't quitting rise of kingdoms specifically for those games at least not a majority and trust me i've seen many comments from you guys saying that you've quit rise of kings for infinity kingdom because you've seen some of my videos which that's awesome and i'm super happy that you found sort of a new home right and a new game to enjoy but another major reason why people continue playing rise of kingdoms is for the sunk cost right you've already invested how many days into the game how many hours into the game or how many hours do you still invest into the game one major thing that i see as a criticism of competitors to rise of kingdoms is I don't have enough time to play more than just rise of kingdoms because believe it or not these games do take a lot of time to maintain your account and to continue your progression there's constant there's daily events there's weekly events such as arc of osiris plus there's you know just the events that give you value in general right so if you don't spend enough time within a game like this then you're going to fall behind and so a lot of players because they've already invested so much time into the game they are more likely to continue investing time into that game because a they don't want all of their progress to feel like they've lost it right if you just quit then you lose everything you've invested and two if you are gonna invest time into a game you might as well continue playing the one that you're playing it's the least amount of resistance right if you open up your phone which game are you gonna tap on a brand new one or one you've played for two years you're just instinctively more likely 
to continue playing the same game now this is a bit of a fallacy right because the amount of time and effort and money you've invested into rise of kingdoms is believe it or not already gone that you're not you can't get it back no matter what no matter how long you play this game that time and money and effort is already gone so you can continue to enjoy the game for as long as you want but this is a very valid argument nonetheless right i don't have time for multiple games like rise of kingdoms so if i'm gonna play one i'm gonna play the one that i've already invested money and time into but wait a minute okay because rise of kingdoms isn't the first game of this genre i mean lords mobile has been around for a long time and in fact Many players quit Lords Mobile to play Rise of Kingdoms. I know Gecko Gaming used to play Lords Mobile for sure, and he still has some of those videos up on his channel. So it's not impossible for a game to steal players from another, especially within the same genre. So why aren't other games stealing players from Rise of Kingdoms? Well, we've already talked about the case that some of them are, right? Of course, some of the games that are competing with Rise of Kingdoms are actually stealing some of the players. I know that for a fact because I've seen it happen, but it's not happening in droves. It's not happening on a massive scale, at least from my perspective, right? From what I can see, that doesn't appear to be the case. Like if you're upset with rise of kingdoms for a year, why aren't you playing infinity kingdom or Lords mobile or some other game that's similar? Well, there's a couple of reasons, right? Moving over to a brand new game in this genre as a player who has a lot of time and money invested already is risky because you don't know as an early adopter if that game is going to be successful or not right if you first started playing rise of kingdoms when it first came out you didn't really know how big the game was going to get this game still to this day is extremely popular and very profitable and it's played all around the world when you first started though you didn't really know that if you started at the very beginning especially when it was in like beta for example right and so if you look at games that are coming onto the scene that are competing with rise of kingdoms and you're a power player in rise of kingdoms meaning you spend like an hour or more a day playing the game for years switching over to that game may not be a smart investment because you don't know how successful that game is going to be so for example you can look at rise of islands i made a video about this a few weeks ago and many of you actually enjoyed that video a lot but not that many people jumped the ship to play that game and the reason is because it's a very new game and it's very limited and so the odds of that game succeeding don't seem to be super high from my perspective and so you might be thinking, okay, well, who cares if a game isn't as popular? If you like the game and it's fun, well, then just that's all that really matters, right? But that's not the case with MMORPGs. See, the thing with MMORPGs is that there is a social aspect to it. And so you are more likely to enjoy an MMORPG if other people are there to witness that progress, that power, that achievement that you get from playing the game the reason that this is such a big deal for games like rise of kingdoms and other mmo style games is because it's such a big time and money investment so if you are a player and you have got all these choices of city builder games to play the game with the most players that's going to last the most amount of time is where you will see the most amount of reward and achievement for the time and money invested and so as an existing player of rise of kingdoms if you are already powerful in this game leaving to another game you really have no way of knowing how popular that game is going to be or how long it's going to last so you're taking on that risk and a lot of players just aren't willing to do that they're just not so okay we've talked about the theme of rise of kingdoms and we've talked about the sunk cost that players feel and we've also talked about the risk that a player takes when they do jump ship to another game Game that could be less popular and have a shorter lifespan all of those points are strong on their own but when you combine them all together it's a very powerful argument for why players continue playing rise of kings but it's not it that's not just it because again we have to look at games like lords mobile okay similar theme similar popularity at its peak and many players already had a ton invested in that game when they came over to rise of kingdoms so what happened there why did players quit that game for this one well i think there's a lot of reasons okay i think there's a lot of reasons but two reasons in particular stand out to me as a player as someone who hasn't really played lords mobile i've downloaded it just to check it out 
it's not that interesting to me but two primary things one the infinite zoom of rise of kingdoms is truly interesting and unique right and you can see that it's not perfect in its infinite zoom right there are some uh little hiccups here and there but you can infinitely zoom from inside your city to outside into the world and that's a really interesting concept for a game like this and what it does is remove the number of loading screens and breaks in the flow of your gameplay even if returning home to your city is just the click of a button in the bottom corner many games that compete with rise of kingdoms have a small bit of loading in between going from outside your city to in and from inside your city to out and that breaks up the gameplay pretty substantially and i know that sounds ridiculous right it sounds ridiculous because even if it only takes a second it just sounds insane but consider this i find myself sending my gatherers in rise of kingdoms out way more frequently than i do in games like infinity kingdom because i just in rise of kingdoms to send out the gatherers you're two clicks away there's no waiting but in other similar games there may be that tiny bit of loading in between and it's just enough resistance to where if i'm tired i'm just gonna put the phone away it, it is what it is but the biggest thing and the biggest innovation of rise of kingdoms is the free movement in the open field this is the primary function that keeps players invested in rise of kingdoms and again this may sound like a small silly feature to keep players engaged who cares that you can move your troops around the field just like this in other games you would just move them to a specific point on the map why would you want to stand in the middle of a map anyway there's nothing there it doesn't matter the reality is that free movement in the open field makes you the player feel like you can go and do whatever you want because you actually can i cannot tell you the number of comments i've gotten on videos of competitors to rise of kingdoms where the comments are saying i would love to try this game if only it had free troop movement and the reality is that rise of kingdoms stepped on the scene with a similar theme as maybe its competitors but it brought in these innovations that stole the spotlight now many games are emulating this at this point but when rise of kingdoms came out a few years ago they were really the only ones that had it so effective and even when rise of kingdoms first came out they didn't have it like this this wasn't exactly what the troop movement was like they've made improvements over time and a lot of you guys might not remember that back in the day you actually sent your army to a resource node and then you would actually stop them midway to redirect them somewhere else and that's how you would get free movement but now you just double click and you can move multiple armies wherever you want on the map and it's a huge improvement so my prediction is that those of us who are frustrated with rise of kingdoms and with lilith and all of the horrible decisions that they've been making over the last year yes many of us will quit just because of burnout or life things or whatever they just get bored which is a slow decline but we'll start to see massive amounts of players quit rise of kingdoms when there is a a similar game that offers an even more unique innovation on top of what rise of kingdoms has already built and trust me there are plenty of game developers trying to figure out what that next innovation is because games like rise of kingdoms are insanely profitable but they are a huge risk and to whoever the game developer is that figures out the next innovation in this genre they're gonna make billions of dollars but until that happens we've got plenty of reasons why many of us are going to stick around and play the game even if it's passively just because it's our best choice and it's what we're used to but if there's anything to be learned from world of warcraft lilith cannot rest on its laurels because eventually the rug will be ripped out from under them and i don't want to see that happen honestly i don't I, I mean i make content for this game i like this game i want rise of kingdoms to be the company that comes up with the next innovation for this genre but based on the changes they've made in the last year i am just not confident that they're even trying to do that but eventually the time will come and i'm interested to see what game is going to come next and guys with that being said if you enjoyed the video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out a ton it gets this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it if you're new around here subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time that i upload a video follow me on social media instagram twitter facebook discord all that stuff is always down below and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been on new york i will talk to you guys again soon peace